Well, g'day, g'day, and welcome back again to Jiao Ching. And today we are at the high speed railway station. We're about to get on a train heading to Guangzhou. Um, so I'm handheld at the moment, no microphone, so I hope everything's coming through okay. Uh, we're just going to, uh, uh, without my gimbal, I can't change my camera automatically. So let's just stop this recording and we'll uh, switch our camera around. So we're up here on the platform. We've got a train just come in on the other side here, just working his way in. Uh, we've got a train coming in this side in about five minutes, I think. Uh, so yeah, we're heading off to Guangzhou. We've got a big Gaelic football competition tomorrow that we're headed to, and uh, we're just waiting for our train. So yeah, I was hoping to uh, show you inside the railway station, but by the time I got here and bought a ticket, uh, it was, uh, I was already being, being called through, so we might have a look at the Guangzhou train station when we get down there. Um, I don't know which way the train's coming from, we've actually got a first class ticket, so we're going to sign off there. When the train's coming we'll uh, turn back on, give you a look at the train as he comes in, and then, uh, yeah, we'll turn off again then, get onto the train, get ourselves settled, and then we'll take you for a little, uh, Give you a little look around the train so stick around uh yeah for those of you who haven't ridden high speed rail before it should be fairly interesting and here comes our train now on the way down so this is this is the high speed trains here in china and don't they look absolutely spectacular Nice and quiet, absolutely beautiful machines and gets you to wherever you want to go in no time at all. So, uh, just checking what's... So I want uh, car number one. So we're right down the back end of the train. Okay, first class, very nice. So we're going to turn off there, we're going to get ourselves on the train and then we will uh, give you a look at things once we uh, once we get settled inside. Oh, this must be our car here. So we'll see you on the inside. Okay, so we're now on the train. We've just left Foshan Station on our way to Guangzhou. I'm speaking in a quiet voice because there's lots of people on here. Um, but we'll just give you a little. Spin the camera around here and give you a little look. So the first class cabin here, basically we have two seats on either side here. We are currently going through a tunnel, so it's very dark out there at the moment. We should come out any moment. Uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. No, still in a tunnel. We're going to get up and walk around a little bit and give you a look around, but there's a few too many people on here at the moment, so we're going to uh, skip that idea. <coughs> yeah, too many people looking at me weird. Um, and we can see up the front here, they've got a... Uh... Oh, here we go, we're outside now. And as we look, we get past this area. We should... see just how high up. So we're a couple of floors up above the ground level. And all the trains seem to be ridden, uh, risen off the ground. Then up here on the display up here they should give us a speed that we're currently currently moving at. There's various bits of information coming through. Okay, it's not showing us the speed. So, 
heading into Forshan, the top speed we were doing was 181 was the top speed I saw. Okay, so there we are, 149 at the moment. So she fairly moves along. When you look out the side, it doesn't look that fast until you see something nearby going past. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, sort of because you're raised up off the ground. You don't have that feeling of speed. But if you look at this bottle of water here, barely a ripple. It's super smooth, super quiet. So from here, from here we're going to be getting on the subway in Guangzhou. So uh, yeah, we'll give you a look at that at the same time. I wish I could have walked around a little bit more. And then when we head back tomorrow night, we might actually look at coming back on the slow train tomorrow and maybe we can give you a bit of a bit more of a look there so yeah stick around we'll uh hit the subway next don't go away so here's the train we've just come off of and uh we are in guangzhou south station which we can see is huge there's heaps of lines so we're at line 21 now i can see another one two it's 25 looks like 27 lines coming in here so uh yeah it's pretty damn big station here everybody here who's got off the got off the train having a cigarette waiting for uh, the crowds to disappear there's heaps of people heading down the escalators so I'm going to join them and have a cigarette myself. Uh, yeah, big crowd. So from here we're going to head downstairs. I think the metro station is actually straight downstairs from here. Uh, we're up above ground. Uh, I think we're a couple of stories up. And uh, we've got to get down underground to the subway station. So stick around. We'll give you a look in there and give you a look on the subway train as well. So we see the crowds of people getting off the train. This is the terminal station of this train, so we've got new people getting on. The train's probably going to head out. We just came in from this direction. I imagine the train's going to head back out, heading back the way we've just come. So we're going to try and join the queue here, find our way downstairs. Actually, we might, we might actually hit the steps. And uh, when we get down to the subway station, we'll give you a look down there. Stick around. So we are now on the subway, uh, traveling at high speed. Uh, so yeah, jumped on this place is absolutely jam-packed. Um, we are at third of stations, so uh, yeah, we've got eight stations to go through. And then we're going to switch on to another line to get to where we're headed to. It's uh, oh, we can see a station just out here. And we fairly fly through all the stations, everything very, very clean, very neat. Uh, yeah, they do a very, very good job of keeping everything very nice here. And here we go again. And if we look up into the roof here, we've got the, uh, the line that we're on is the one with the green lights on it there. And then the other line that you see, number eight, is the line that we're going to switch onto. So we can see they've got uh, both Chinese and Pinyin, so you can sort of figure out where you're going. Uh, yes, very, very good service. I don't use it very often. I don't come to Guangzhou very often. And I don't know if you can hear that, but the announcements are in both Chinese and in English. So, yeah, if you're a foreigner, it's not too hard to uh, get by on here. So, yeah, stick around. There's more to come. I'm not sure what else we're going to see uh, and where else I'm going to have a chance to pull my phone out, but we'll endeavour to keep you informed. Okay, so down here we have the escalators going down to line three. Uh, we've just come off of line eight. We've just jumped off of this train. We've got a, so this is an interchange between the two lines. Here goes our subway. And we've got a huge crowd of people here waiting to get up the escalator 
to head out of here. So we're going to get upstairs and uh, we'll see what we've got next. So we're up in the next level up in the subway station now. Uh, to get out the gate we've got these little tokens which we bought at the station where we started and so yeah we just feed them through these gates here and we should be able to get out of here with any luck uh, get out of here and get some fresh air hopefully so here we go single journey ticket and out we go through the gates so now the idea is to uh, find an exit okay we've got a exit and d exit and uh find ourselves a hotel to stay in so yeah we'll get up out of here and we'll come back and see you again well we finally got out of all that travel stuff and finally found a hotel which was an absolute mission i pulled up uh there was a hotel came up on baidu maps <laughs> i got directions to it i walked around and around this building I don't know how many times looking for something that looks like a hotel but there was nothing there at all uh, it turns out it was a tiny little door had to crawl up two flights of stairs and uh, get, finally get all the way up there and uh, they tell me there's no rooms available so yeah walking 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 trying to find another one it took me about an hour and a half all up but uh, just so we are staying just over to the right here. There's a premium seven hotel. Now I'm not sure, but I've got a feeling this here might be Guang, Guangzhou Tower, uh, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, down in front of us here, we've got a couple of guys busking guitar and singing. They're really good. I've just sat down and watched them for about 10 minutes. Heaps of people walking past. Starting to quieten down a little bit now. But, uh, look at this. This building next to the tower just looks amazing. The lights on that thing are awesome. And then the tower next door, it's been changing colors. I'm just waiting for another change of color for you all. It uh, looks absolutely spectacular. So yeah, this road, when we walked in, this was just jam packed. We got in here about, I don't even know what time, maybe quarter past five. So right on rush hour. It still looks like rush hour. Compared to Jiaoqing, this place is just a nightmare. We're actually gonna head down the back here, and hopefully down here, we can find somewhere to have something to eat. Um, so we're gonna go and do that. When we uh, finish there, we'll uh, spin around, get back to the hotel, and we'll give you a look at a hotel room, how much hotel room costs, and what you get in a hotel room here, because yeah, it's quite a nice room actually, it looks pretty good. Uh, huge big parking area here. And then uh, looks like lots of food shops up here. So hopefully here we can find something to eat. We've got a Starbucks coffee. Looks like we might have some market stuff out here as well. So I'm gonna go find something to eat. And uh, when we come back, we'll probably be back in the hotel unless we find something interesting on the way through here to have a look at so stick around there will be more to come uh, later okay so we haven't managed to find anything to eat yet but uh, just gonna have a little walk through here this is something to do with the uh, movie industry here in China uh, they got a big display unfortunately as per normal I can't tell you what any of this stuff says but lots of little things that must have been used in movies over the years. Uh, and then lots of pictures from movies. So they've got a heap of these uh, little cabinets set up right the way along here. So statues. 1986, 1982, so we're into the 1980s here, going to 1990s. 1906 to 1968 so I'm guessing this must be 
some sort of director or famous actor or something, I'm not sure. Um, and as we're walking, I'm looking over to my right, looking for somewhere we can get in to have dinner. This place everywhere is just jam-packed with queues out the front. I think we're actually going to go, there's a shopping centre further off. Uh, well, I think we're going to go into the shopping centre and try and find something in there because this is just too hard. But yeah, this display here is quite interesting. They've just got all these shipping containers with... Oh, here's one with some of the uh, movie equipment, the cameras and stuff. Geez, that light reflecting in there is not good. Are the cameras or are they projectors? They might be projectors for the movies. I'm not sure. But big units compared to, you know, what I'm doing, basically filming on my phone and the size of things today, it's amazing the difference. So I've got more, looks like projectors down here. And then a uh, boom microphone, so on the big boom machine here. And then we have speakers down here. So this looks like this display is more about the making of the movies. Okay, and then the next one we've got, oh, these look like, I don't know, spotlights maybe, smoke machines. These ones here are definitely lights. Oh, that one down the end there might be some form of smoke machine, I wonder. And then, uh, yeah, all the lighting stuff. It's pretty cool. Very, very old equipment. So, try and see if we can see some years here somewhere, giving us what years these things were used. Uh, no. No, there's not really anything there I can uh, make head nor tail of. Down here we have... Okay, so Pearl River Film Group. So I don't know if that's a group that makes films, if it's some sort of film enthusiast club, something like that, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice little display. Lots of really, really old equipment must be from a long time ago so we're going to sign off there again just for a minute uh carry on trying to find something to eat and then we'll be back with you once i've uh managed to have a feed of some form or other okay so we've made it to our hotel room we've just had a bite to eat and uh i thought we'd give you a quick look around the uh hotel room so this costs uh, 200 RMB for the night so we have shower area nice big shower actually it looks like a good size uh, toilet bathroom and stuff and then bed we've got a desk over here television uh, and a big mirror so yes yeah, not bad. So it's about $40 Australian uh, for the room here. So what I thought we might do, just to finish off this video, I've got down here a heap of printouts of, uh, of comments from various videos we've done. Uh, I thought, especially the... Uh, the video on the cashless society thing uh, proved to be surprisingly popular. So uh, I thought I'll take off some of those uh, comments and uh, just have a quick talk about them. And some of them I will go away. I'm going to go and do some research and, uh, and make videos about various topics. Uh, a big one that was mentioned a few times was the social credit system here which is not what you've been led to believe uh, if you're in the West so let's go through a few of these uh, cash Humphreys 2398 this is from the Jade market in Surhway uh, this is truly amazing if all the Jades are real Jade it is magnificent it is a shame it does not have prices attached I wonder 
where Surhui is. I have never heard about this jade market before. The scale is shocking. Uh, yeah, the place was huge. I could not believe how how big that place was. Uh, Surhui is sort of, I'm just trying to picture it in my mind. I think it's in the northwest part of Jiaoqing. So it is part of Jiaoqing where I live, uh, but it's not a part that I've spent time in before. I am, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to learn how to do using Google Earth, how to make maps that we can actually move around and I can talk over so that I can actually show you where some of these places are so you can actually get a bit of an idea of where things are. Um, right, next comment from the Cashless Society video. Helen Chang, 8800. Thank you, Scott, for sharing this video. Can foreigners open a bank account in China? If we are able to open a bank account, what other requirements such as pa passport, China address, China phone number? Uh, yes, you can. I've got a Chinese bank account. Uh, I know you need a passport. Definitely need a phone number. I'm not sure about the address. But I think you probably need an address. Yeah, you'd need all that stuff. I might look into that. Um, that might be worth doing a video about for people who are planning on coming here for more than just a short-term visit. Uh, yes, one worth thinking about. Okay, another one from the cashless. Uh, this is from Privacy Help. I don't understand why Americans are so negative towards China, even though the US itself, the majority of houses and streets also have surveillance cameras, all connected to the internet. Even smartphones use facial recognition cameras. Um, right, first part of that. I don't understand why Americans are so negative towards China. It's because American politicians spread this garbage and the media just jumps on board. Um, there's actually a left-wing media company on YouTube that I, I used to follow. I've just given up. I've just unsubscribed from them. They are constantly telling us, you know, anytime there's a story about anything that the media is saying, they're always saying, don't trust the media, don't trust the media. But then anytime something bad happens, they always compare whatever's happening bad in the world to China and Xinjiang, and nothing's happening in Xinjiang. Uh, I hope to actually get there uh, next year. Once I've got video equipment sorted out for this channel, um, that's sort of my big focus at the moment is getting equipment sorted out so I can do a better job. I do actually want to go to Xinjiang and have a look. Um, as for the surveillance cameras and everything, um, there's a lot of talk about how much surveillance there is in China. I've heard, and I don't know how accurate this is, but I've heard that the place with the most surveillance uh, per whatever, per distance or per capita is actually London in England. Um, so yeah, China is not the worst. Um, and I, I actually, we'll get to the other part in a minute because um, someone else mentioned something similar and there's another part of that that we'll get to. Okay, in the cashless society, uh, okay, somebody had asked something about I can't remember, uh, but this is from user in 5 pic oh, it's a lot of letters and numbers. There is a law in China that no business can reject cash. Electronic cash transaction is just a preferred choice of publics for its convenience. Yes, exactly. Um, yes, if you only have cash, you can still use cash. It's not, you know, when I, as I said in the video, although... In practice, it's sort of a cashless society because most people don't use cash anymore. Cash is still readily available. Um, another one from the same video. In China, they don't charge a transaction fee. You'll have to wait until hell freezes over before it comes to the USA. What, for free? Uh, yes. Um, there is no transaction fee for using your WeChat Pay or Alipay. I think if you transfer money from your WeChat out of your WeChat back to your bank account, I think then there is a like 0.05% charge or something. I'm not sure. I'd have to confirm that, but 
I think that's the only time you get charged. Um, right, from the back in Jiaqing video, amazing, uh, from just me 6275 amazing that people can walk around in quiet, dark streets without worrying about safety and not getting attacked, robbed. That's freedom. Uh, and then there was a follow-up from somebody, oh, I've lost the name here, who says, I live in California, every house here has cameras installed and still not safe. We probably have more cameras than China. Cameras don't do much, it's the people, surveillance, the talking points of the Western media. Ha ha ha. Ah, uh, yes. Cameras themselves aren't going to do anything. Um, and I think a lot of the thing about being safe here is less to do with the surveillance and more to do with the culture. People very much stick to themselves here. And if you do things wrong, the society is going to come down on you regardless of the criminal stuff, the criminal courts and whatnot, and the police, society is going to shun you if you uh, do the wrong thing. So yeah, it's a very, very, um, it's a very, very safe, so amazing that people can walk around in quiet, dark streets. I've at times like not be able to sleep. I'll get up at three o'clock in the morning, I'll go out for a walk, and I'll be walking down dark alleyways everywhere. Uh, you know, streets I've never been in. I've never, ever felt unsafe anywhere in China. Um, I mean, most of my times in Jiaqing, Yunfu, spent a bit of time here in Guangzhou. You know, I've been here a few times, Shenzhen a few times, uh, over to Guangxi province. I've never felt unsafe, not once. Um, now, OKEN1117 says, better enhance the usability of... E C N Y digital Renmin B and promote it at all airport entry points. I don't know anything about E digital Renmin B at all. So that's one I'll I'll have to research. And if there's anything interesting in that, I will get back to you all. Right, from Burnside 100. Burnside. Where's that name from? Oh the Bill. Uh, DCI Burnside, <laughs> good character. Uh, from the Cassius video, I toured all over China a decade ago. When returned from the first trip, I immediately returned for another tour. Couldn't get enough of it. There are a few big things that seem to work in China and yet would not want in my European country. It sounds hypocritical, but the sheer size of China's population changes everything in my humble opinion. I cannot imagine chaos in China. Your videos are very good. Always like to hear rational views and opinions on China. Uh, yeah, the thing about uh, things that work here, there are things that work here that would not necessarily work in other countries. Um, part of that is a cultural thing, and part of it is governance. So the government here is very, very strict on companies you know, like WeChat Pay, if WeChat Pay do the dirty on people, the government will close them down right quick. So they do the right thing. You know, the companies here are very good. Um, and I don't think there's not many countries in the West that have politicians who have the balls to stand up to some of these big companies. You know, you look at, well, American politicians are bribed. You know, they receive donations from all these big banks and all the other big companies. And then the rest of the West tends to just follow America, which is a bit sad, really, because I don't think America is a good place to follow at the moment. Um, and for Americans that are watching, it's nothing against you guys, American people, fantastic people. But your government and your system at the moment leaves a lot to be desired. You guys deserve much better than I think you're getting at the moment, sadly. Uh, from Pass by 8070, from the same cashless video. Glad that you were picking up a lot of viewership. When I was in China 30 years ago, Chaoqing is our local city, and I was there two months ago, and it is currently looking amazing with so many parks and nice areas. What's even more amazing is that the standard of li living for the amount of money. I am currently in Sydney, but don't mind having a part-time retirement there. By the way, my village, Lichar village, 
one of the more popular attractions in the area. It would be great if you can do a video on that when you get around to visiting. Lee Cha Village. I've had a look on the map. I can't find it. Um, yeah, if you see this video and you hear me talking about this, come back and comment again. Uh, give me some idea of where it is because, yes, I'll go and do a video there. And if there's anything in particular there that you would like me to go and video, you know, something that might bring back happy memories, let me know and I'll go and, you know, bring that to you. And, you know, you can go and show friends and family and stuff uh, where, you, where you were. I'm happy to do that for you. Uh, also, for cashless thing, the Gallant Saint 2034. Simple, simple comment. Cashless, no thanks. Fine, you know, that's your decision. And to be perfectly honest, before I came to China, and even my first year, or maybe year and a half here, I would have said the same thing. I hated the idea of, you know, all the, everything being done online and stuff. I hated it. But now that I've lived with it, I have changed my tune. I, uh, I couldn't imagine doing it another way. Uh, from Minchin5187, also from the cashless video. If it works in Logan, Queensland, it will work in Australia. Um, I have no idea what's happening in Logan, Queensland. I'm going to have to look into that because, yeah, maybe they're trialing something, doing more electronic payments or something. I'm not sure. So, yeah, it could work in Australia, but you've got to have the right governance. Uh, from the same video, Computer OT8SI. It's not just for the goal of cash as society. It also means that if you happen to have conflict with the China government, you could lose all the money you have for lifetime. In the West, they need to set up infrastructures with accountability, credibility, and many other considerations. Also in Western countries, the government can't just ignore or force those people who have difficulty to adapt to new ways of payment. Right, few things here. Uh, Lose all the money you have. Well, basically, when you use WeChat Pay, your bank account is linked to your WeChat. So you, most people don't keep a lot of money on their WeChat account. It comes out of their bank account, which is exactly the same way it works in, in Australia. Um, um, and I've known of people who are criminals in Australia who have their bank accounts confiscated. So it can happen in the West. It does happen in the West. Um, I don't think it happens any more here than it happens anywhere else. Um, also in Western, the government can't just ignore or force those people who have difficulty to adapt to new ways of payment. Nobody's forcing anybody here to adapt to new ways of payment. Um, if you want to use cash, you can use cash. Like someone else said, it is illegal for shops not to accept cash. So you don't have to do this sort of payment. Um, but we have, you know, there's people. So one of our teachers in our school, Kathy, who's a good friend, she actually goes out. Uh, well, she used to go out. I don't know if she still goes out and does this. Now she's making videos uh, teaching the elderly how to use their mobile phone. So she'll teach them how to use their camera, how to use this, how to use that. And one of them is how to do cashless payments, how to do WeChat Pay and Alipay and all that stuff. So there's a lot of people who go out, uh, community sort of work like that, doing community programs is very popular here. A lot of people do that stuff. So there's heaps of people to help. Um, now I commented back to this and then this guy replied again, not the same in China, if your bank account is frozen, the bank and even the police won't tell you why it's frozen and for how long. And some secret agents will take you to a place and you can't contact anyone outside. But in a normal civilized country, the government must have responsibility to inform you why, for how long. And you can defy the order through the independent court. Uh, no, you can't defy the order. You can uh, challenge in a court the uh, decision and get it overturned. You can't defy the order. Uh, because your bank account's gone. The government's got it. Uh, secret agents will take you to a place. Dude, seriously, too many Tom Clancy novels. <laughs> yeah, pff, this is just so stupid. 
Uh, it reminds me of that uh, tennis player, female tennis player, who was having an affair with somebody here, and people found out, and she disappeared. And everyone was saying, oh, the government arrested her, she'd been taken away and being interrogated, blah, blah, blah. And then a month later, she reappeared. She hadn't been taken by anybody. She had just gone into hiding. She was sick of the publicity. She went and hid herself. All this stuff about secret service, bloody, oh, you idiot. Anyway, uh, check out the poor man named bloody, bloody, blah. He gives some... Uh, He was doing something, giving money to people to buy stuff. And it turns out he was doing it. He was going against the law. I, can't, I did read up about it. And yes, he had his uh, Doyen account frozen, a couple of other media, social media accounts frozen. I've never heard that he had any money confiscated. But... Uh, yeah, he was doing something wrong. There was something wrong in the way he was doing what he was doing. Uh, I think the person that I actually saw that he... He was going, giving people money, helping them with shopping, people who were really poor. And it turns out there's quite a good likelihood that the, the old lady that he was helping was actually an actor. It wasn't real. It was fake. Uh, whether or not that's true, I don't know. I'm still trying to find more information, but... Um, right, back in Jiaqing, uh, from Cool Eye 3674 another trend phenomenon which is quite relevant to a Tier 3, three or 4 city is... So, Jiaqing is a Tier 3 city. Is that young people moving out to nearby big cities. What do these smaller cities do to keep their talents for local development? In the case of Jiaqing, young people can easily move to Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Zhuhai, or even Foshan. Ah, uh, yes, a lot of young people do. A lot of my students, when they finish in college, they want to go to Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Foshan, Dongguan, uh, the bigger cities. And they will, and a lot of them do. But when they get married and start having children, a lot of them come back to wherever they come from, whether it's from Jiaqing or uh, Qingyuan or... Mao Ming, uh, they go back to where they come from when they start having families because those the smaller tier three places are just nicer, safer, there's less traffic for kids when they're out in the street and stuff. It's just a better environment for bringing up kids. So yes, they do leave for a while. They might go away for five, ten years, but quite often they do end up coming back. Um, from Cool Eye three six seven four from back in Jiaqing. The, this part of Zhuangzhou has both the old town vibe and the necessarily mod con. It should be fun and easy for expats to live in. This place was the original place of Cantonese language. There's a lot of history in it if you are interested in, in exploring. Uh, yes, it is fun and easy for expats to live in. It's a good place if you're a foreigner and you want to come and live in China. Somewhere like Jiaqing is great. Guangzhou, Shenzhen, a lot of foreigners live here and you know, I'm sure they find things they love, but it's not for me. They're too big. Way too many people. I don't, I don't enjoy it at all. Um, as for the origin, originating place of Cantonese language, we have done one video where we sort of touched on uh, Cantonese, uh, what was it? Lingnan culture. Uh, and yes, that's all around this area. Right, from the cashless video, okay, from PG Founder, uh, how can be a gasoline motorcycle be here? Um, okay, so this refers to the idea that a lot of, a lot of larger cities, motorcycles are no longer allowed. Um, so here in Guangzhou, I was just looking at that out in the street earlier. There's no motorbikes here. It's all electric scooters and stuff like that. Uh, no petrol-powered motorbikes, no petrol-powered scooters. Um, so yeah. So my reply was, yeah, those rules are very regional. Different places have different rules. Here in Jiaqing, petrol scooters are still sold and registered. But for how long? Who knows? Same thing with the pandemic response. The Chinese government copped a whole lot of criticism for being too heavy-handed. 
but in reality, the national government had very little to do with the actual implementation of protocols. Each province handled things themselves, and the national government only really stepped in if things went seriously wrong, as happened in Shanghai towards the end of that period. I took a trip to Guangxi province right next door to Guangdong during the pandemic, and the differences in the way the two provinces were handling things was profound. But back to the bikes, as electric bikes improve, I do think petrol scooters and maybe even eventually motorbikes will slowly become far less common. Motorbikes are a bit different because there's a lot of deliveries like uh, gas canisters and stuff are done on motorbikes. They have big uh, frames with, they'll have eight gas canisters hanging off the back of these things. They're amazing to see. I have to try and video one of them one day and show you. It's just when you look how much they carry on these bikes, it's incredible. Um, and then a reply to that, thanks for the details about COVID. A virus has to become harmless to be successful. Best examples, the sniffles virus. So the Chinese government waited until the new variants had been harmless enough to end zero COVID strategy. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, they handled it pretty well. I mean, I lived here. I didn't go home during the, during the pandemic. I was sort of offered by my school, you know, what do you think? Do you want to go home? I said, nah, stay here. And they handled it fine. I had no issues with anything that happened. Um, from RSX24, weird name, from the cashless video. The Western are so crook, it never worked. The Western culture doesn't have honor, trust, trust, trust. It's more of entitlement culture. Um, yeah, kind of. The trust, trust, trust. I don't think, it's not so much the Western culture. Um, I think Western culture is okay. I think the problem is the business culture. So in, in America, I believe companies who are like publicly listed companies, they are mandated, they must maximize profits for their shareholders. Um, so they're encouraged to do things that make people not trust them. It's, uh, yeah. Okay, from Fofaf, from the cashless video, I encountered a problem with the cashless system in China. Count me as an old fashioned person. I have a habit of leave, leaving some tips on the bed in the hotel room for the cleaning service where I stay when traveling. However, during my last trip to Shanghai, I was befuddled for a while on how to manage this tipping with Alipay. In the end, I just left money from my home country on the bed and the cleaning service gladly accepted it. I just hope it won't be too much hassle for them to exchange it. Yeah, tipping's not really a thing here. Uh, I don't know, are you American? Because <laughs> um, really America, as far as I know, America's the only country really that does tipping like America does. Um, most other countries pay their staff a decent bloody wage. Um, so replies to that. In China, there is no habit of tipping. There are relatively more foreigners in Shanghai. So tipping waiters can accept in some small places. You tip waiters will not accept. It is recommended not to tip in China in the future. Uh, in some Chinese do not recognize this behavior. So this reply was from a Chinese person, I think. And so, yeah, his English wasn't perfect, but... Um, and then another reply here from Hack Silber. You're a generous gentleman, but please don't tip. You can reward them after the service is over instead of tipping at the beginning, although there is no difference in the results between the two. The Chinese, really, there is no habit of tipping which seems like a kind of charity. Most people hope to make money with their own hands and rewarding is high recognition of their services. Supplement, I know that tipping was originally used to recognize service quality, but today its real social meaning seems to have changed. And the boss, someone else replied, the boss is responsible for the salary and no tipping is required. Don't get into this bad habit. Yeah, I agree. I. I've heard lots of stuff about the American tipping thing and I think it just sucks. I'd hate to be working in a job where you're relying on tips to be able to make ends meet. That's just so stupid. Um, right, another one from the cashless video. From front seated 5983 All this while I thought China was cashless because the Chinese were 
so poor and had no cash. Wondering where on earth I got that impression. Yeah, the media. Politicians. Goodness me. Okay, here comes a fun one. This is also from the cashless video. Rick's talented tongue 910. Tied to a social credit score where they can cut you off from public services or even shut your money off. Is you showing wrong thing? Stay off the drugs, dude. Uh, okay, we'll go through the rest of these responses. Okay, so I responded to that. Firstly, I don't touch drugs. Wouldn't do that in any Asian country. Secondly, the social credit score is nothing more, is nothing like is reported in Western media. And thirdly, even if it was as advertised, you think that they can't just close down your bank accounts? Seen that done more than once in Australia? and heard about it in plenty of other countries. Sorry, but your comment is ill-informed. Stay tuned because there will be a video coming in the future about the social credit score and what it actually entails. He replied again, you have no idea what is going on. Wish you luck in Wonderland, Peter Pan. Peter Pan, yeah, I'll take that. Call me Peter Pan, that sounds good. Uh, so I responded again, really, I have no idea what's going on. How much time have you spent living here? How much actual direct knowledge do you have of life inside China? I'm guessing none by just how ill-informed you are. Don't worry, there will be a video on this topic coming up soon, featuring actual legislation from the Chinese government and actual experiences of locals who live here. If you have any actual ev evidence to bring to the table, please present it and I'll include it. If you're just going to keep making unfounded claims, then don't bother coming back. There are plenty of other channels happy to cater to your views. Um, and then he got a couple of other responses from people. So uh, from LLXF9KF, Chinese only heard about the so-called credit system on the news, non-existent in daily life, but we actually, in credit system in the West, have you checked your credit score on your bank system? Good question. You have a social credit system in, in, in the West as well. And then someone else responded, with your IQ, what kind of internet are you on? <laughs> Made me laugh. Okay, uh, from the same video, could you please tell us something about the one, two, three, four, five complaint line? Is it just for show or do they actually address issues raised by the public? Um, okay, first of all, I don't think it's just a complaint line. I think it's a hotline to put you in touch with government services. So you can use it to get in touch with police, fire department, ambulance, hospitals, uh, education department, housing authorities, anybody you need. I, I didn't actually know about this. I've mentioned uh, earlier Jerry's take on China in a couple of previous videos. He actually recently did a video where he was talking about this. He was interviewing somebody from the government. And if I remember, I'll try and link his video uh, into here somewhere. Um, but he was actually saying he was in Yunfu. Uh, I don't know how long ago, a year ago, a couple of years ago, and couldn't find a hotel that would accept him. Uh, because he's a foreigner and Yunfu is a small place. And so he rang one, two, three, four, five, and they connected him to a hotel, got him somewhere to stay. So it's not just complaints, it's also services. Um, but yes, I will look into that more and I will look at bringing you a video on that. Um, so yeah, I've only recently heard about that. Okay, and somebody responded, the 12345 hotline is to provide feedback to the relevant staff, government, regarding your issue, and the staff will respond to your question within the specified time. Most problems can be solved. In addition to the 12345 helpline, citizens can also provide feedback on issues through WeChat mini programs, government websites. However, most things are handled through WeChat mini programs, such as handling social security, pension insurance, unemployment insurance, and other social public practices. The main function of the 12345 hotline is to solve and consult any questions that you do not understand through the phone. Now, I believe, okay, let's, hold on, let's finish, finish this little section. Another commenter. 
one, two, three, or five has helped me solve the noise problem of the farmer's market downstairs. The problem that the municipal heating is not too hot. The problem that there is an uneven section of road at the entrance of the community. And any problems that you can think of that cannot be solved can be reported to 12345. The government personnel will send these problems to the corresponding units to solve and pay a return visit within a week. If the relevant units do not solve your complaint, it will affect their year-end assessment and ultimately affect the promotion because the promotion of Chinese officials is related to these. Uh, yeah, so from what Jerry was saying, it sounds like he actually interviewed somebody who's had experience with this, someone who's like in local government somewhere. So like I say, I'll try and find that video for you and I'll try and link it somewhere for you to have a look at. Well worth checking out. It sounds like a really, really good service. And apparently it does work for foreigners. They have translators and stuff there. So if you don't speak Chinese, there's still a good chance you can be catered to. Right, from Chongqing Punk, from the Guitar Studio video. Great googly moogly, what a sweet shop. Thanks for the tour. Yeah, it's a great shop. It was a, uh, yeah, I've known Ben, like I say, I've known Ben since, almost since I got here. Uh, he's a great guitar player and he does great work on that guitar. Right, uh, Greater Bay Area Hero 1401 from the Cashless video. Same for me, I've carried a few hundred RMB in my bag as backup and never used it. The best thing that has happened to me is when Didi app was made multilingual. In English, I just travel everywhere in China so easily. You are right, everyone in China has a strong social responsibility. We care deeply about the country and making it better for the future generations. Uh, to which I responded, the DD app becoming multilingual uh, was a huge benefit to all foreigners in China. Honestly, I thought it was just English, hadn't heard about other languages being available, but well done to them if it is. Made travel so much more convenient. Hopefully more apps will follow suit in the future. So yeah, the DD app, not long after I arrived in China, they announced that they were doing DD English, uh, which when I, not long after I got here, they were trialing in... Let me think, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing, Chongqing. I think they were the five. Um, and then within probably three months after that, it was available China-wide. And it works really, really well. So yeah, good on them. Um, whether or not it's multilingual, I thought it was only English, but I could be wrong. I only use the English, so pff, I don't know. Um... So the reply to that was, I thought it follows whatever language your phone is set to. I could be wrong, but I use English anyway. If I haven't got Didi, I'm completely lost and without my legs. Yeah, so Didi, great, great, great company. Right, from the cashless video. In China, the government runs a country. In US, companies run the country through their puppets in government. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, same video, youth hostels. Youth hostels, are you beautiful in China with cheap food in big cities? Uh, yeah, it's very, very cheap to live in China. Just Google and write youth hostel and the name of the city you want to stay. Um, yeah, things are so cheap here. Um, if you want to come and stay, you can, you know, be here on a shoestring. It's great. Um, I've never done youth hostels. I've never even thought about them. I'm staying in a... Hotel, hotel. Um, right, from also from the cashers. So we have Google and Apple Pay also. Yes, you do, but I don't think I don't think those things are being used in anywhere near like the numbers here in China. Or not even the numbers. Take the numbers out of it because China's got a massive population in the percentage of people using them. I would say I'd be pretty confident in saying that almost 100% of people in China use WeChat Pay, Alipay. I wouldn't even be confident in saying that that number would be 50% in Australia. I don't know about other countries. Um, right, from the same video. Okay, can you talk about the social credit system China that the West keeps saying China has? Um, Okay, so we've got a few responses here. 
Take that, no difference from the credit score you have in the West. If one wishes to rent a flat, get a loan, get a mortgage, get insurance, etc., the other parties would check your credit score before make any decision. Of course, if you have a history of criminal or any large, small, recordable offence or bankruptcy, that would affect your credit score. Would you call this social credit? I see no difference. And pretty much, that's what the social credit thing here is. It's looking at your financial status, your financial background. It's looking at your criminal background, which we do the same thing in Australia. I'm sure you do the same thing in America, in Britain, in Germany, in France. I'm sure all these countries do the same thing. It's not what people think. I've done a bit of reading. I've done a bit of research already. Um, I've got another few pages on my phone to look at. Uh, so yes, there will be a video coming up. As a Chinese citizen living in Shanghai, what I can tell you is that there is no such social credit system in China. At least when people hire someone or to rent out their home, nobody asks, will ask for such thing because nobody, <laughs> nobody knows it's existent. Maybe it exists, maybe not. Only when you buy a home, you'll be required by the bank to submit a personal credit report, which you have to personally go to the subsidiary of the central bank to print one out. That report is all about your banking activities. Western media are full of lies about China, yeah. Don't waste your time on a complete lie about social credit system in China. No such thing at all. The credit system in China is only about financial defaulters. West has worse one than China. In China, those defaulters still have regular life other than high expense. But in the West, those defaulters must be homeless. Um, yeah, it's not just financial, from what I understand so far. Although, like I say, I'm still reading. I'm still trying to find stuff out. Um, right, from Can Humphreys 2398 It would be helpful to short-term visitors to make a video demonstrating slowly, step-by-step, -step, how to download WeChat Pay and Alipay apps and how to make the payment. It would also be helpful to recommend the places worth visiting, such as in Guangzhou. Thanks for the videos. Um, well, let's take the last bit first. The place is worth visiting. Go back and look at my past videos. Um, there's heaps of places worth visiting. And as the channel goes on further and further, there'll be more and more stuff come up. And like I said earlier, we are going to try and do a map thing that I can talk over and actually show you. Here's Guangzhou. And from Guangzhou, this is where Jiaqing is. This is where Yunfu is. This is where Shenzhen is. Uh, when we went to Shenzhen, here's the little parts, the little places that we went. So this is where we went to. So we're going to try and do that. I'm still learning how to do all this stuff. Um, and same thing with how to download and how to set up these WeChat Pay, Alipay. That's another thing I'll have to learn how to do. I'll have to learn how to screenshot a video from my phone and edit all that together. So... Yes, good idea. I can't do it yet because I don't have the ability, but I might get someone from our school to give us a hand, help me out doing that. Um, right. It is almost impossible for visitors to use WeChat Pay as it's almost inevitably has to link to a bank account, a Chinese bank account, but you can ask a friend if you have to transfer you some money. So yeah, if you're here for a short term, um... You can get someone to send you money. You can hand them cash. They send you the money on WeChat so you can have some money on your WeChat. Um, and somebody else has replied after that. You might not have heard about the news that the government is about to solve this issue. So foreign visitors will be able to link foreign bank card with Alipay, which is apparently already done, and WeChat, and will try to negotiate with foreign banks which charge 3% for every transaction to either low down the percentage or the cost to be shared or seller pay for part of the transaction less than two to 300 RMB. Things definitely get better. So yeah, I hadn't heard that, um, but it sounds like with any luck, pretty, well, sounds like you already can with Alipay link your foreign bank account and with any luck, you'll be able to do the same with WeChat soon. So that's exciting. That's another thing I will do a little bit of research on. Ah, uh, right. In a cashless society, losing the phone can create a big problem when having to make an appointment, an immediate payment. 
So carrying a small sum of cash remains necessary just in case. Interesting topic and good analysis. Um, right, to which I replied, by no means comprehensive. I might do a follow-up in the future. There are other aspects to be thought through that I'm still contemplating. As for losing your phone, that is not really a problem to me in terms of losing access to money because there are ways around that. I still carry my debit card, so that's not really an issue. My major concern would actually be being able to contact somebody to help in that situation. I now have a couple of phone numbers I keep with me uh, in my bag, in a pocket. I've got them separate from my phone. So that if I do lose my phone and I'm somewhere and I need to get somewhere, I need to advise someone of what's happening, I can contact somebody because, yeah, losing, losing the ability to pay for something doesn't really bother me. I've always got my card in my pocket. I never use it anymore, but it's always there but hopefully don't need to use them. Um, to which we had another comment. So, in fact, in addition to swiping your phone to pay, you can also swipe your face. It can solve the problem you mentioned. So yes, Frankel, my mate Frankel, he's got a little corner shop around the corner from his house. I went into the shop with him one day. We were grabbing, grabbing a couple of Cokes or something. And uh, he grabbed them and I went to pull out my phone to pay. And he said, oh, no, don't worry. And he just looked in the thing like this and beep. And it was paid for. He didn't even pull his phone out of his pocket. So it's bloody amazing. Uh, I haven't set that up yet. I'm still maybe a little bit dubious, but we'll get there. Um, so, yeah, actually, we'll, we'll look at doing something about that because that really surprised me. Um, okay. Skip, 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 skip. Right. Just a couple more here. Um, oh, here was another response. Uh, so this is translated from Chinese, so the translation might not be perfect. Ten years ago, I never dreamed that China would develop so rapidly, that science and technology would be so advanced, and that young people's living standards would be getting higher and higher. All indicators point to the path towards the world of great harmony that Confucius spoke of. What a prosperous time. Yeah, the development here is astounding. It just blows me away when I think of, even in just the seven years I've been here, the changes I've witnessed are mind-boggling. Um, and then from the life for a Chinese student here, uh, QT81 commented, her English is very good. Um, yeah, her mother was an English teacher she also, as a singer, she also likes to sing English songs, so she practices a lot. And now she's got me to talk to as well. Um, yeah, so young Emily, she, her and her sister, we will talk to her sister in the future. Her sister's, you know, better again at English, uh, just being older and more, more experienced. Um, yeah, spewing, we didn't get to talk to her. She was back to school before I knew it. Um, so we will do that. Uh, right. Okay. A couple of funny ones to finish off with. We've got two more to look at. Uh, from the Chinese New Year and Spring Festival video. Sir, you film, <laughs> Sir, you filmed really well. But if you've watched a lot of videos, you should know the unwritten rules of YouTube. <laughs> Every viral video about China must have a negative title. For example... The biggest trouble I've encountered in China. Stuck in China. The worst parts of China. Chinese people eating dog meat and bats, etc. Uh, oh, and I've cut off the end. He did say something else after that, but it was all in jest. And yeah, I've seen them videos. Um, I've thought, of, I've actually just gone through and changed all my titles to, all my titles now start with A Life in China just to try and get the algorithm working. But I'm not going to give negative names. I'm not, not interested in playing that game. Um, I'd rather people come and watch videos of mine because they like what I have to say rather than because I give some crappy, bloody, sarcastic title that I'm not going to live up to in the video. Uh, so, yeah. And then from the... From the walkthrough survey video, 
at the 23 minute point now. This is from M. Anthony 888. At the 23 minute point now, although I agree with you about Jerry's take on China being interesting, I am upset to the point of tears that you didn't mention me there. <laughs> Just joking. Nice vid, stay healthy, Mr. Tony. So, yeah, this is another guy. He actually started, he's got a YouTube channel as well, making videos. He started in Jiaqing. I've, I've uh, sort of we back and forth chatted a bit last night on in the comments section here and uh yeah he's been doing this for a couple of years now he was very much like me when he started very new had no idea what he was doing same as me when i started um and yeah i watched a few of his early videos like the very first videos and now i've then went and had a look at what he's doing now and yeah he's improving heaps He's done a good job. Uh, so yeah, that's Mr. Tony. If anybody wants to go and check him out, there you go, Mr. Tony. You've got your uh, you've got your mention. So yeah, so that's a few of the replies to some of the comments here. Uh, we're going to wrap up there. Wow, that's forty-seven minutes. Goodness me. Um, yeah. So I hope you found that interesting. I uh, I've never never done like a response video to comments before, so. That's the first time, and you know, says so we've had all these new subscribers come on board, and that cashless society video, I think it's up over seven thousand views now. So, yeah, I figured I should uh, respond to some of the comments, and yeah. So now we're actually going to go have a shower and go to bed because uh, we're going to be up early tomorrow morning. We're going off to watch this Gaelic football which we're gonna video. I've also got camera gear here. They want me to take cameras and stuff, so I bought a couple of big sport lenses and stuff out. Um, so yeah, stick around because that's coming up. That'll be coming up straight after this video, pretty much. I'm pretty zonk that uh, trip on the, well, actually the high-speed rail was okay, but once we got to the subway, oh, just so many people. Rush hour here is just crazy. And then trying to find this first hotel that I couldn't find for ages, just walking around and around and around, trying to find this place to eventually find it. And, oh, no, we got no room. Walk off to another hotel where we got to here. And, yes, it's definitely time for a rest. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you enjoyed that, hit that like button. Share with friends who might like to learn more about life here. Uh, subscribe to the channel to see what else is coming up. We've got a few other things coming up in the future as well. And uh, yeah, if you've got comments, questions, chuck them down in the comments section. Maybe in a future video, we'll respond to more comments and stuff again. So uh, yeah, do that. And if you've got anything you would like to see uh, that I haven't covered yet, that you'd like to know about, maybe something you've heard about, maybe something about history or whatever of China. If you come up with a good idea, you know, it's something I might look at in the future, going away, doing some research, making a video. So yeah, do that. Hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you want to see. Um, other than that, thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe. Uh, and I'm off. I'm off to have a shower and go to bed. So we will see you all in the next one. Cheers.